So what we're doing today is we're putting dominoes in moldings. We get this question quite a bit. Instead, how do I put a domino in this molding? It's always working from the back, the flat part. Okay? Is that what you needed, Big D? Okay? And then what I did is I set up my machine just like this, and I made sure my flats were flat, and I'm just going to verify that over here again, just like this. And make sure I am flat and flat, and then I'll lock it in just like this so we're all set because I'm going to be positioning it just like this with no movement, okay? It's that simple. I may just take my, my measuring stick and just to bring them out. So let's do this side first. It's pretty simple. But what I need to do instead of measuring it, Okay, I want to take the machine, I'm going to get this pushed back, and I'm going to take this flat and this flat, and I'm going to orientate it to the machine, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. Okay, now, you see this? I could have measured it. I won't do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to release this, and you see how this part here is flat on here, and I'm going to make sure that it ends up, hopefully we got this big D, it's flat on here and here. See how it's flat on the fence and flat on the plate? And I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to verify it and bring it right in so there's no wobble either way. That's how easy it is. I didn't have to take a sliding bevel or some measuring instrument to qualify that. I just took the material to the machine and set my machine up. Hopefully you're all following this. It makes it so easy. So much fewer calculations. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make these mortises. And, oh, wow. By the way, I, hopefully you noticed this. Did you see how I took the moda off of the fence? It makes finding bevels and angles so much easier because it's not back heavy on the machine. So I'm going to take that. I'm completely bottomed out. Just going to verify that. I'm completely bottomed out. See that? See how that's touching there? So that way there, that mortise is going to be at the top. All right? Just I'm always verifying just to make sure. Just like this, and I'll flip it around. Absolutely perfect. <clears throat> so I have that set up. Now this is a 4 by 20 domino we're going to be using. So I got the 4 millimeter in here. You can go back to the 4 millimeter domino episode where we've talked about the setup of the machine. But I just want to reiterate right here, my plunge depth is 20 on this because this cutter is 10 millimeters shorter than all the other cutters. Okay, so I'm all set up. I'm ready to go. Double checking. Okay, so what I'm going to do is one more label. I'm going to write L on this side. Actually, I'm going to change that. I'm going to do tight on this side and loose on this side. And just, did I get the right one in here <laughs> when I set it up? Oh, boy. Let me just verify that again. See how you can get turned around really quick? When I take this and bring it in, this is exactly what I want, just like this. And let me just take this like this. Sorry, everybody. I just got turned around here. Okay, everything lines up. So I'm going to do tight on here and label it one more time, loose. Let's do the loose first. Here we go. That way there, <clears throat> when the glue is setting up, you have a few minutes to position it. So everything long point to long point meets up. Good. So here we go. <clears throat> Always, I, I think I've said this a hundred times on Festool Live, before you put the cord in, make sure your machine is off. When you switch between settings, make sure. And I'm going to take this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that mortise just like this. I'm making sure that plate lies dead flat. And see that right there? Good. Okay, so on that, we have a little bit of wiggle room, about three millimeters on each side. So that will help when we're setting up the glue. This one, <laughs> think about this. Do I have any place to clamp this? I don't. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we're going to be doing these in a tight setting. 
So I build these, okay? And you'll see I have one for each of the moldings that I've done here, okay? They're just offcuts you're going to toss. But what I did is I built a base where the plate can safely lie while I'm doing that small piece. And what I did is I did a traditional bench hook so I could take that and bring it in just like this. And look at this. See that? So now I'm just going to do this molding just like this. I'm, I'm trying to get my thumb right on there where I need to be. There it is. See that? And then I'll come over here and grab this one. And now I have the support of that molding off cut. So when you look at that, I'm going to take my dominoes. I'm going to get them in there just like this. Okay. Just like this. And sometimes, and I'll show you another tip. You never want to do this if they go... If they're going in too tight, you never want to sand the face because that's what your long grain to long grain uh, glue line is. What you want to do is just sand the rib off like this so they go in a little bit easier in that tight, just like this. Oh, look at that. Chris, you're my biggest fan. And when you put this together, look at that. And now this is why you have that little wiggle room to bring it in just right. Okay, so there you go, and there's your return on your crown, and you'll see more of this when I set up the top of the new cis wall. See that? So there you go. So there's the first one. Okay, now here's the one where I really want to show you a few things I've learned over the years with this. I'm going to do these two here tight and these two tight because I'm going to use not my eye but the precision of the machine okay I have two samples over here okay this is chair rail right okay the first sample I put one domino in oh nope that was the good one <laughs> check it out I have one domino in there and that should be fine but I wanted to teach you a few things about the machine as I did this okay and look how that comes together really nice right okay what I'm going to do today I'm just going to put two dominoes in there, just like this. So you have that perfect return or that perfect outside corner of the molding. So you're going to learn a lot on this one. I have over the years. I'm not going to make a mark on this. I'm just going to go from this side and this side, 20 millimeters. But how do I accomplish that? It's easy. I'm going to do a setup. And hopefully you remember this because this is an all-encompassing one. I think you all know how to do this, okay? But let me just do the setup. I'm going to put on this bracket. So I got a few things I got to do here first. I'm going to open it up a little, bring this completely up. Whenever you put the support bracket on, you always put it on a flush table. You see the two, the two holes that are tapped. I'll put this on, okay, and tighten up the screws. How's that coming through now, Big D? Good? All right. And just tighten it up. Now, <clears throat> remember this about the domino, those flaps, which I'm going to open back up with a 2-millimeter hex because we're going to use the flaps, kind of. Okay, there we go. There's the flaps. From the flap, hopefully you remember this, to the center of the bit is 37 millimeters. Okay? And I'll do the other side just like this. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, good. Now, when I encump or use, check it out, these little wings here, guess what? That shoulders against that flap, and now to the center is 20 millimeters. So that's how we're going to get that on that chair rail. Okay, but what I'm going to do is, oh, I have it set at 20. I'm going to set and bottom out my bevel at what? 45. So I'm going to take it at 45. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to verify that. And look at that, 45 to 45. I'm good to go. Oh, yeah, baby. And then I'm going to take it and bottom it out because I want to put my domino at the very top there. Okay, so here's the other really cool tip I want to show you on this, everybody. Think about it. Look, because I'm working for the back here, this is tilted. Could you do it? Yes. But what I like to do is take 
the same piece of molding, just like this. This may be up a little, okay, but I gotta work off of the table. But I'm gonna take this now and lock it in. That way there, I'm above the table. I'm going more at a 90 in here, okay? Get that other clamp in there, making sure it doesn't impede my plate. I'm just gonna verify just like this, good. And I'm ready to go. Hopefully you all follow in that. Good. Oh, thank you, Chris. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you guys catch what he said? <laughs> it was pretty cool. Hey, that's my shtick, dude. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So, <clears throat> when I go through and I'm using a domino and I'm doing a lot of repetition with it, what I always like to do before I turn it on is just check everything, making sure everything's tight. I know I'm at 45, just a verification. I know I'm going to do them tight. I know my plate is all the way down, and I just verify that I'm going to be plunging at 20 millimeter. Okay, now let's take one of those flaps out. See it? Okay, I'm going to take that right in here and grab that side. Okay, and just verify that I am sitting flush on there. So there it is right there. I'm good to go. Okay, now, when I go to switch this, I completely cycle it off because that bit is actually right here. So to flip that off, I, I flip it out of the way and flip the new one in there. The machine is completely off. That's a good safety factor right there. Then I'm going to take this one and do this mortise. Okay, so there you go. There's my two mortises. I'm going to take and put my dominoes in there. I don't have any blow through because they're sitting at the very top of the bevel. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, and guess what? I'm going to do this one. But I'm going to use that other piece as what? As a holder. So there we go. I'm going to make sure that I push it out so that little flat, oh, that little flap catches there, not here. Just something I've encountered in the past. Okay, and here we go. I got, got that flap. I'm coming from this side. I'm going to bring it right in. I'm going to wait for it to cycle off. I'm going to take that other flap. I'm going to bring it in. And I'm going to catch that other shoulder. <clears throat> okay. You know, Big D, when we were looking at sound effects, we might want to get a drum roll. There you go. How's that, huh? Okay, so here we go. Look. See how they line up? Come on. Ooh, that's tight. But look at that. Perfect, guys. Comes right together. And there's your there's your miter. Wow. Okay. So hopefully you all followed that. But you know what the best part is? You can go back and rewatch it on YouTube, Instagram, and what else? Facebook. 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 Don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. And if you don't want to miss a Fest Tool Live, then you can hit the subscribe bell. Did I say that right? Notification bell. Notification bell. There okay, the bell thingy at the bottom. <laughs> all right. Wow, Garrett, you've been busy, huh? Holy moly, look at all the people. Okay, hey. <clears throat> Thank you. We love you. I'm going to call out where you're from. Thanks for telling us. Okay, we have, boy, Lusanne, Switzerland. Estonia. Bosman, Manto Montana. Boy, I haven't done this in a couple of weeks, eh? East Yorkshire. I know who that is. Who is it? Ian. It's Ian. Mr. Harrison, how are you? The Netherlands, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Clacksburg, Maryland. We have somebody from Delaware. All right, Bear, Delaware, Derby, UK, Edinburgh, Scotland, Kansas City. Hey, it's Craig, right, from Kansas City? Good to see you, Craig. Eatonton, Georgia, Edmonton, Canada. Monroe, Louisiana, Batavia, 
Ohio, Portland, Oregon, Whitestone, New York, Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Rhode Island, we're coming to see you this week. Next week, we'll be there next Friday. St. Louis, Mont, Missouri. Woo! Holman, Hol- Holmdel, New Jersey. Oh, my God, I haven't done this in a while. Okay. Salt Lake City, Utah. Atco, New Jersey. Frederick, Maryland. Greeley, Colorado. Charleston, West Virginia. <laughs> Garrett, stop doing that. Charleston, West Virginia. Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Tynesburg, Ma- Tynesboro, Massachusetts. Kearney, New- Nebraska. Johns Creek, Georgia. Zionsville. Hey, where's Zionsville? About 10 oh, miles that way. About five miles that way. Johns Creek, Georgia. Monty, Ohio. Malta. Who's from Malta? Chris. Christopher, how are you? We're coming to Malta. That's too live from Malta. I'm, 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 I'm. Working on it. Jasper, Kingman, Arizona, Union, Maine, woo! Albuquerque, New Mexico, Florence, Kentucky, Moorhead, North Carolina, Broomfield, Colorado, Spencer's Port, New York. That it? Good. Stop making faces to make me laugh, Garrett. Okay, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I'll say it a hundred times. We love you. You guys make our years here at Festool. The best. This is the best hour. We all believe this at Festool USA and Festool Canada. That makes us Festool North America. We will be back live two weeks from today for the rest of the year. We got a heck of a year planned, and you guys better be prepared because we got some cool stuff in the works. It's just going to keep getting bigger and better, and you will see why in September and in November. Okay, so there you go. We'll see you in two weeks. We have a best of going in. And everybody who tuned in today who live, thank you so much. We missed you. And guess what? I think that's a wrap. Yep. It's a wrap. Stay safe, everybody.